Hi, my name is Milan and in this video we're going to be talking about reading application configuration values and all of the options that we have available to do that. I prepared a simple application where we have a class representing our application options. It only has one string property which is called example value. This property is mapped to a section inside of our application settings JSON file. Here I have a configuration section with the name of application options, which is the same name as the class representing our configuration values. And the only value inside of this section is the example value, which again matches the name of the property on our application options class. There are a few ways to bind this JSON value into our application options class. I'm going to use the simplest one first and later in the video I'm going to show you the more complex examples that might be interesting to you. So the simplest approach would be using builder services calling the configure method where we specify the application options as the generic argument and we have to provide the configuration section that we're going to match to our application options. To do that I'm going to say builder configuration get section I need to pass in the key which represents the name of our configuration section and because it is the same name as the name of our class I'm going to use the name of operator to pull this value and fetch the configuration section. So this takes care of configuring our application options and binding it to our JSON values inside of app settings.json. So how do we actually use this? Let's define a simple get endpoint that we're going to use for getting the options value. I'm going to name the route options and let's quickly do the implementation. To get the application options at runtime, we have to inject an instance of the iOptions interface and specify the application options as the generic argument. And I'm going to say options. And now on the iOptions instance, I have access to the value property, which is going to give us our instance of application options. And now we can access the properties on our application options, which is going to contain our configuration values. I'm going to create a simple anonymous object that is going to represent our response. And I'm going to assign it a single property, which is going to contain our application options example value. And let's return this from our API by calling results.ok and specifying response. If I start the application and head over to Postman, here I already prepared a GET request for fetching the options from our application. So when I send this request, I get back a JSON response containing our configuration value. And you can see that the example value in this case is current value is one. If I go back and I head over to the app settings.json value, and here if I say that the current value is two, and I save it, and now I head back to Postman, and I send the request to our API again, you can see that the response that we get back still says that the current value is one. This is because the iOptions interface is registered as a singleton service at the start of the application. So it's only going to read the configuration section from our app settings.json file once. It's going to cache that value and it's going to reuse the same instance throughout the lifetime of our application. To be able to read the newest value from the application settings, we would have to restart the application and then you would get the latest value in the response. If you need live reloading capabilities, there are some options that you can explore and I'm going to show them to you now. So instead of injecting iOptions, there are two more interfaces that we can inject. One of them is the iOptions snapshot. And again, we're going to specify application options as the generic argument and let's name it options snapshot. Another interface that you can inject is the iOptions monitor. And I'm again going to specify application options and name it options monitor. iOptions snapshot and iOptions monitor are fundamentally different from the iOptions interface. I'm first going to show you how they actually work. And then I'm going to explain the specifics behind all of them. I'm going to slightly modify our response object and I'm going to give it a few properties. The first property is going to be called options value and I'm going to pull it from the iOptions interface. Then I'm going to have the snapshot value and I'm going to pull it from options snapshot. Then I'm going to add the monitor value and I'm going to pull it from options monitor current value this time and then I can access the example value property. So let me start the application and let's see how this is actually working. 
I'm back in Postman and I'm going to send the GET request to our API again. And you can see that this time we get a response with three values. The first value is coming from the iOptions interface. The second value is coming from the iOptions snapshot interface. And the last value is coming from the iOptions monitor. What is interesting now is that the iOptions snapshot and iOptions monitor have support for reloading configuration values. So if I go back to our project and inside of the app settings.json file, I replace the current value as two with let's say the current value is three and save that. And now I send the request to our API again. You can see that this time we get a different response. The value coming from the iOptions interface is still the same because it is configured as a singleton and it is cached for the lifetime of the application. But you can see that the values coming from iOptions snapshot and iOptions monitor are refreshed and they do return the latest value that is present in our application configuration. I want to highlight the differences between iOptions snapshot and iOptions monitor. The iOptions snapshot interface is configured as a scoped service, which means it's going to be resolved once inside of the current application scope. In our minimal API example, the scope would be one HTTP request. iOptions monitor, on the other hand, is configured as a singleton service, but the current value property is always going to read the latest configuration value. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure that you smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Now, I mentioned at the start of the video that I'm going to show you an additional way to configure your application options. I'm going to add a new class to our project. I'm going to name this class application options setup and I'm going to use this class to configure our options value. I need to inherit from the iConfigureOptions interface and I'm going to specify the application options as the generic argument. So let's implement this interface. One good thing about this approach is that it supports dependency injection. So I can do something like this. I can inject an instance of iConfiguration, which I'm going to use to access the actual configuration section that contains the values of my application options. And the way that you bind the values from the configuration section to your application options is by calling configuration get section. You specify the name of the section. In our case, this is name of application options. And then you call the bind method and you specify the options instance as the argument. So what this is going to do is it's going to get the configuration section and it's going to bind it to the application options instance. Now to make this work, you need to change the configuration in program.cs. So we're no longer going to be configuring our options by calling configure. We're going to use a different approach. We're going to say builder services, configure options this time, and we're going to use the generic version. And now I need to specify my application options setup. And what this is going to do is tell the application that when it's resolving an instance of I options of application options, you have to use this class, the application option setup, to configure that options instance. The problem here is that we are calling bind, which is going to bind the configuration section to the options, and that is fine, but it's not going to register the change tracking capability that is available in the example from the start of the video, where we called the configure method on the iService collection. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm sure you're going to love the two videos that you can see on the screen right now. So go ahead and watch them. And until next time, stay awesome.